Nebraska. Need we say more? At this time of year, it's one of the most recognizable clashes in all of college football. Since 1912, the Big Red Faithful have converged from all over the state of Nebraska to root on the Cornhuskers, a right that is oftentimes more fanatic than frenetic. Yesterday, on a day when we give thanks, we met the Swanson family. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Swansons. We're the friendly Cornhuskers. Come on in. We'll show you the big red room. Well, thank you, Mr. Swanson. We would like to take a tour of the big red room. And red it is, folks. From hats to furniture, stuffed animals. Oh, there's a sweater from the 1941 Rose Bowl. Mementos from over 48 years of Nebraska affiliation. And after the tour, it was on to the turkey. Gene, do you prefer white? White, yes. Or I wouldn't give Gene. And a sumptuous Fine. meal with wishes <laughs> of a Nebraska victory. What else? Yep. Okay. So let's head for Lincoln. All right, here we go. go and like a postman in the dead of winter, they brave those elements and drive the 46 miles to Memorial Stadium. To join the over 75,000 pulling for the Sooners and the Huskers. The skies have been gray for this Thanksgiving Day weekend. Rain has been coming down, but it doesn't bother the folks here. On a day like this in Nebraska, there's only one thing to do, folks, and that's go to a football game. The dominant color, regardless who wins this one, it will be red. Welcome, everybody, to Memorial Stadium, CFA College Football, coming your way on ABC. It's the big one, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger, the entire state of Colorado watching this one, too. Here is what it's worth. If Nebraska can beat Oklahoma, and remember, they gave them 45 points at Norman a year ago, but if Nebraska comes back this year, they would go to the Orange Bowl and play the top-ranked Miami Hurricanes. But if it's Oklahoma, then it'll be Colorado going down Miami way. I don't think ever before in history has the entire state of Colorado pulled so hard for these Sooners from Oklahoma. Let's bring in my colleague right now, Mr. Vermeil. I dick the weather, the number one topic. Well, Brent, as you can see by the graphic right here on your screen, it's bad. And if it gets worse like it was a little while ago, I think it really favors Oklahoma. Oklahoma is more of a north-south, straight up the field running game. Nebraska, they move the ball parallel to the line of scrimmage a lot. They pitch the options and all that. I think the bad weather favors Nebraska. We got a whale of a matchup between these two. Very evenly matched. Now, you know I have my own system of evaluating each game that we broadcast. And I haven't broken down a game all year where the two teams appear to be so even and equal. Nebraska, number one in the Big Eight, uh, big eight on offense. Oklahoma, number one in the Big Eight on defense. Nebraska, number two on defense. Oklahoma, number two on offense. Now, when you put that all together, Someone, usually the quarterback, has to come up with a big game. These two guys on the screen right here, Gundy or McCants, has to come up with a big game. The guy that does is going to direct a winner. So throw another log on the fire. Come to think of it, put on one for us, too. Coming up, Nebraska and Oklahoma. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff. and they have deferred, so Nebraska will go on offense with the first series of the game. And back deep, Tyrone Hughes with that left hand and a cast is going to try it. Coach Tom Osborne yesterday didn't think he would be able to return for Nebraska. He is their number one return man, and there's their number one eye back, Derek Brown, back deep with him. Scott Blanton set on that sideline. Brad Riddell will handle the kickoffs. He also is the punter for Oklahoma. He has the stronger leg, so he will kick it off here from the 35 on a rainy, blustery afternoon in Lincoln. We're underway. Derek Brown.
first down here after Brown cannot get the handle on the opening kickoff. And it's Brown. He's to the six yard line on first down behind the offensive line. These are the backs and the receivers here this afternoon. And Derek Brown, number eight rushing in the nation. John Bostic and Mitchell with 24 catches apiece. Up front, normally that huge Nebraska line featuring three 300-pounders. Borboom, Wiegart, and Lundgren, Lundberg, all over 300 pounds. Now second down for Nebraska. Back on their own six-yard line. The toss to Brown, looking for room, slips, and out of bounds, just outside the five-yard line. So the footing extremely treacherous. Joe Bowden, number 45 there, he has 110 tackles to lead this Sooner defense up front. And in the secondary, Jason Belser, the strong safety with five interceptions. He's a group that has picked off a total of 24. There is Bowden. He'll roam from sideline to sideline. Nebraska backed up. This a third down. Will they put it up? They will. McCann on the roll. Throws. Mitchell can't get the handle. And Nebraska now must punt it out of their own end zone. And this is going to be very difficult for Mike Stiggy. Stiggy saved Nebraska in the Colorado game. And he's going to be asked here early to get them out of a deep hole. Brent Stiggy is an excellent punter. I watched him punt here in the bad weather on, on Thursday, and he did an excellent job. Otis Taylor set to return, and he is standing at the Nebraska 42, punting against this wind right now. Oklahoma expects some field position. Stiggy back close to the end of the end zone as he takes the snap one high. Oklahoma will let it bounce. They're going to have wonderful field position at the 33-yard line. Now here is Cale Gundy who missed the Oklahoma State game because of minor groin surgery. So after a two-week layoff, he comes back now to quarterback the Sooners. The decision by Gibbs to kick off after winning the toss. Hey, the super decision, the first one made correctly in the ball game. Nice to start out on the positive side in decision making. Right here is Gundy, the six foot sophomore. Oklahoma threatening on its first series and Gundy to put it up. Receivers covered, so he will take off. And Gundy fumbles. Ball was down at the 15 yard. Oklahoma came into this ball game plus 13 in turnovers, and there they put the first time they touched the ball on the turf. But luckily for them, Hayes, he's flushed. He's up there now. He's, see, he's got the ball out away from his body. He should be consciously thinking about keeping that ball in, especially with the weather conditions as they are. Keep it in tight. Protect it with your free arm. Offensive lineman Groninger saving the moment for Oklahoma. He recovers the loose ball, and in weather conditions like we have here in Lincoln, we can have a lot of that here this afternoon. They must deal with the weather. Ted Long is the motion receiver, and here's the big fella for the Sooners, Mike Gaddis, the 225-pound senior. He has put together back-to-back 200-yard -back games. That's the first time it's been done at OU since the legendary Billy Sims did it. Up front, Mickey Houston, wrestler Wallace Moriarty, and Broninger, and it was Broninger, the right tackle, who recovered that fumble at the 15-yard line. Oklahoma down to the Nebraska 11-yard line. Second down. Rashid, the fullback. Gundy changes at the line, and he'll go with Rashid. Stopped at the six-yard line by the Sooner defense, which lost six players from last year's team to the National Football League. But Pat Engelbert in the middle, number 97, a very active nose man up front for the Cornhuskers. And in that secondary, Steve Carmer. He could become the first defensive back in the history of Nebraska to lead them in tackles. It's a young defense. Now third and short. 
Oklahoma can get a first down inside the five-yard line. The hand to Gaddis. Gaddis slips through for the first down, battles, fumbles into the end zone. Recovered by Oklahoma in the end zone. Let's see how the officials rule it, whether or not he was down. Mar that looks like they're marking it down on the one-foot line. Good extra effort by Gaddis. Again, boy, that ball just popping out. Remember, this will be a first and goal. See, they get the direct handoff back there deeply. Now, he, again, he has it in one hand. They have to start consciously thinking about using that other hand to protect the football. As you see, that ball free in the end zone. Now, first and goal. And it is Rashid, the fullback, directly in front of Gaddis. Nelson overloads in the backfield. Gundy keeps it himself and goes into the end zone. The officials waiting to see the football in Gundy's possession. There's a signal for the touchdown. Oklahoma strikes first in the big one. And it was the fumble on the opening kickoff which buried Nebraska in bad field position. Punting against the wind, Oklahoma was able to move in on its first possession. And now, number 16, is Scott Blanton on to attempt the extra point. It's going to be treacherous for the ball carriers. All, all through the ball game. You know, if, if Nebraska has an advantage anywhere in this ball game, it's in with this phase of the kicking game, field goal and PAT. Nebraska a little more efficient. And you're going to notice a few frozen lenses here this afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. There's only one thing to do on a day like this in Nebraska. Let's play some more football. Let's replace Derek Brown back deep. And remember, it was a botched kickoff return that put the Cornhuskers in an early hole in this one. So he is back now with Hughes to return this one. And they have switched sides. You know, Nate Turner is a real talented athlete as, as a receiver. He's a good runner, and I, I've seen him throw the ball some, too. He's an all-around skilled athlete. Very sure-handed guy. That's why they have him back there. Riddell whacks it deep. And out of the end zone. Nebraska will put it in play at the 20-yard line. Much better field position than they had with their first series. There's the punter coming out. You know, the last two games of this series have been very lopsided. Normally, we're accustomed to close, hard-fought games, but in 1989, Nebraska won 42-25, and you can see the Cornhuskers huddling very close to the football with that offense. But then last year, they went down to Norman, and the Sooners buried them, 45-10. to Nebraska did not recover from that game. They gave up another 45 to Georgia Tech in the Citrus Bowl. Now, McCann on the roll, keeps it, and there's his great skill. Down the far sideline, Keith and McCann, before Terry Ray gets him out of bounds for the Sooners. First down. See, he has the burst of speed. Once he gets turned up, he can beat the pursuit to that specific spot and pass him up. You'll see this on the option. He makes a fake inside, a little belly fake. He comes down. Now, you see the block by the fullback right there. Knocks the man down. Now he hits that crack. Good speed. Pursuit couldn't get there. 19-yard run for the quarterback. Remember, this is a Nebraska offense averaging better than 43 points a game. Number one in the nation. First and 10 from a camp in the Cornhuskers. Down by an early touchdown. Here's Brown. Stuffed pretty good by that OU defense led by Corey Mayfield, number 46. He made the first hit. Brett, you mentioned how efficient they are in offense. This is the best offensive team I've evaluated in terms of plays per touchdown. Every 13 snaps they have scored this year. The best I've ever broken down a team. The Sooners, not too bad on defense. No. They're giving up 12.4 points a game. That's number six in the nation. Looking at a second down now. And in reverse, they force you to run 51 snaps before they give up a touchdown. Straight back, fakes to the back, tries to set the middle pass, and it's Johnny Mitchell, the tight end. First down, Nebraska to the Oklahoma 45. Chris Wilson hit him there. You'll see right here the tight end will slow block. 
You'll pr pass protect for 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The linebackers drop out of there. They take their eyes off him. Then he releases up inside the zone. Good offensive play. Good design. 14-yard pass to his tight end, Johnny Mitchell, only a sophomore. Aaron Lincoln. The fake to the fullback. McCant rolls to the right. Now, and I'll tell you, he was wise not to pitch that ball. Good statement, coach. He had the ball out there in his right hand, and he didn't pitch it. They're used to going down the line of scrimmage, coming off the fake. See, they're trying to block the person that takes the quarterback. Pursuit comes inside out. See, he had that ball out there with that right hand. Then he gets it tucked in. Trey Tippins holding on, and he takes the Nebraska quarterback down there. I'm going to make an offensive coordinator out of you yet, Musburger. <laughs> you know, you're getting, you're right in there. <laughs> now second down and long for the Cornhusker. Ball at the Oklahoma 46-yard line. And McCant straight back to throw it. Looks for an open man. Can't find him. Sooner's in pursuit on the run, what he does so well. And he was able to hit Corey Dixon, number one. Boy, he throws well on the run. Yeah, that's the best thing he does. You know, what he has done, he's added 11% efficiency to the passing game. Increased it. They haven't thrown that much more. Only a four passes a game more than last year. But they're completing 11% more. Good quarterbacking. You know, normally in weather like this, I'm in a duck blind. <laughs> Did you bring a shotgun? <laughs> Ethan McCant, who opened the season number three on the depth chart and rose quickly to starting status after the injury to Tom Snaz. And that time, the snap is fumbled. Oklahoma ball. It looked up here that Keaton McCant pulled out just a little bit early on the center. They had a man in motion. Here it is, a man in motion. There's a the snap there. See the ball right in the middle of your screen? It didn't get up there cleanly. Obviously, it's on the turf. Quarterback doesn't. They're all looking for it. Defense gets it going the other way. Chris Wilson recovering the fumble for Oklahoma. So the difference in the game, let's remember that Gundy fumble for Oklahoma. The Sooners recover. Now Nebraska fumbles, and Oklahoma comes up with the game's first turnover. And that's a stat to watch in conditions like this. On first down, it is the Oklahoma fullback pounding to the 45-yard line, Kenyon Rashid. And down we go to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl, I hope you're dry. <laughs> I'm trying to stay dry, Brent. I spoke with Bill Shepard, who's in charge of maintaining the field here, and he said despite the rain, the field's in good playing conditions. He actually said the field plays better when it's a little wet. His only concern is that if the temperature drops, the field becomes extremely icy. In the meantime, one of the biggest concerns for the Nebraska trainers is keeping their players warm. They're moving, uh, moving along the sidelines. There's several heaters down here, Brent. One which definitely has my name on it. All right, get over close to it. Those basketball players aren't very tough, Brent. There's a twisting run and a penalty flag thrown by the umpire as Rashid twisting through the middle of that offensive line. And we will let the officials sort this one out. John Lorry is our Big 8 referee in charge of this one from Springfield, Missouri. You know, all these groundskeepers always give you the positive reports about the field and how they don't have to play on it. See? And if they say it's lousy, then someone might say, well, aren't you supposed to keep this real nice? <laughs> to the left side of your screen, you'll see the holding penalty here. Boy, it's a little hard for me to see it in there, but obviously the officials never make a mistake on that holding call. Well, you know, Oklahoma has the great wishbone reputation. They accomplished that during the Barry Switzer era. But Oklahoma right now is completing 51.7% of the passes. That's only the second time since 68 that Oklahoma has completed better than 50% of its passes. They elect to keep it on the ground with Gaddis tackled at the 40-yard line. This will be third and long. Mike Petko bringing him down there, but this would seem to bring up a passing situation now for Gundy. You know, the outside linebacker defensive end did a real good job on that. They wanted to run a power off tackle play, and he just crashed in there and spilled the guard that was pulling in the fullback and made the running back jump outside. That was, play was made by Travis Hill, number 93. Good job, Travis. Here's a third and 12. Albert Hall is the wide receiver out to the left. Joey Mickey drops down to the quarterback's right. And 
and the draw play. Nebraska not fooled. Good defensive play by John Perella, number 92. John Perella excited. A former walk-on. He originally signed with Colorado, then withdrew. Then he walked on. You'll see Perella to the right corner of your screen, number 92. He's working up inside there. He reads the draw. They did do a good job of draw blocking. You should stay on that man a little bit longer if you're going to use what we call a flash technique. Brad Riddell hunting for the first time for the Sooners here. Standing at the Oklahoma 26-yard line with Dixon set to return for Nebraska. On the move, feels it at the 23, looks for a crease. Oh, hit hard at the 32-yard line. Oklahoma leading Nebraska. That was Johnny Anderson lowering the boom for the Sooners. We'll be right back. Third year at Oklahoma. He's been unable to beat Texas or Colorado, and he has split his first two games against Nebraska. First and 10. It's the fullback, the short man in that eye formation, Lance Lewis, his first carry of the game for Nebraska. You know, in visiting with Gary Gibbs, the head football coach yesterday, he told me he thought that if they were going to win the football game, his quarterback had to come with a great game. He had to have a super day. Here's his quarterback, Cale Gundy, and he's had a very good year. Like Brent said earlier, 54% complete for him this year. Only seven pass interceptions. There's his counterpart, and he has really improved Nebraska's offense. Now McCant, the pullback up very close, running the option to the right, and again, extremely well defended by Oklahoma. Joe Bowden and Trey Tippins cut it off, strung the quarterback out, and took him out of bounds. No room on that short side. Yeah, and the field itself is so much shorter going that way, but they do that because defenses shift over strong side. All white jerseys inside out. You saw Trey Tippins, number 80, forcing him to the sideline. This Nebraska offense struggled against Colorado in the first half before they staged a wonderful comeback in Boulder and pulled out a tie. Now McCann firing, intercepted by Oklahoma and fumbled out of bounds, but it's Oklahoma ball. Darnell Walker with the 25th interception of the season for the Sooners and his fourth. You'll see the wide receiver here is going to run a delay pattern right here. He's going to come and delay inside. See, and the ball, see now, receiver clinging it neat. Now watch him come underneath. See, runs, and here it is. It goes off his hands into the air. Zone player out there. Corner had rolled up. Interception. Nebraska turns it over twice here in the opening quarter. Cale Gundy with Mike McKinley, who scored three touchdowns against Nebraska a year ago in Norman, getting his first carry, and he pounds his way to the 27-yard line. Perella there defensively for Nebraska. So the one thing that Osborne feared in this weather, turnovers, and it has come to haunt him in Lincoln this afternoon. And you know, they set a school record, Brent, for playing three games in a row without a turnover. But that's ago, really tough to do. A year ago in Norman, they gave it up seven times. And here already against Oklahoma, they have turned it over twice. It's going to be tough overcoming that. Conditions like this. That toss now to Gaddis looks for daylight, squeezes through, takes it to the 22-yard line, short of the first down. Curtis Cotton, the defensive back, brings him down. Super block by Brandon Houston, number 70, the offensive right tackle. He hooked Kevin Raymakers, the defensive end. It did a real good, and that allowed the running back to hit that crack to the outside of that block and advance the ball. Third and short. Hale Gundy, who snuck in for the game's only touchdown. First down, Oklahoma. That was McKinley again. 
You know, Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, said he was concerned about the power of the two guards inside, Jeff Ressler and Paul Moriarty. So he was going to play some even defense, move his nose guard over on the guard as a changeup, something they haven't done all year. So we'll look for this defense as the ball game progresses. You can see Houston, he's a big guy at 6'5", 294 pounds. The Sooners' first turnover. And again, it was on that snap exchange in this weather. Boy, it is tough. We have a player down. Rev Alberts recovering the fumble. And an injured Nebraska defender down on the play. Alberts will come up with this loose ball. Number 34, top of your screen. See, there it is bouncing around. And then he does a good job of scooping it and bringing it into his body, just as he is coached. I once saw a snap like that intercepted and run for a touchdown against the Chicago Bears. Did you really? Right back. Oh. The first time, Nebraska with two turnovers already, and the officials will be battling here this afternoon to keep the pigskin dry. It'll be the main issue. It's a 7 nothing lead by Oklahoma. Nebraska's ball. McCann hands off to Brown. Brown battles for some yards. He has had a wonderful season for Nebraska, and he is backed up by a talented freshman by the name of Calvin Jones. But Brown is the most successful runner this season against that Washington Husky defense. Washington came in here and beat Nebraska earlier in the year. They had to come from behind to do it. But Brown was able to battle for 100 yards. He's the only rusher to gain 100 yards this year against the Husky defense. He gets five on that carry, comes back again. First down, Nebraska to the 37-yard line. Charles Frank stops him. Brown, only a sophomore. 53, he did an awfully not nice job. Bill Ziegelby did a good job of moving the nose guard. You'll see him right here in the middle of your screen. Now watch his block. He's on Corey Mayfield. See, now watch him run right behind him. Good vision by the running back, good backside blocking. There's the crack. First down for Nebraska. Right behind the middle of his offensive line to the 42 and into the arms of Joe Bowden. You know, he's not a great big guy at 5'9", 185, but he runs upfield with authority. Sat in the locker room and talked with him yesterday. He said, what kind of runs do you like to run? He says, I like to run them all, but what I like most is the draw play because it allows me to take advantage of my mobility and I can find the crack where I want to go. Really gets upfield nicely. In the Colorado-Oklahoma game, remember the Buffaloes twice were able to march 99 yards for touchdowns against this OU defense. That was their poorest performance of the season in those two drives. Otherwise, they have been outstanding. Here comes the Nebraska option. Fumble! Oklahoma! And it was recovered by Tippins. That's one of the disadvantages of running an option offense, and that's why I made the statement in the open, the edge goes to Oklahoma, because so many people have to handle the ball, ladies and gentlemen. First, the center handles the football. Now the quarterback handles the ball. Sometimes on an option, you fake to another back before you get in position to pitch it. There he has it out there, and there you see it being knocked out by Trey Tippins, number 88. And Tippins, high risk. Wonderful job of then recovering the ball on the carpet. Did a nice job. So Nebraska with four possessions, and they've turned it over three times and punted. And here comes Mike Gaddis for Oklahoma with Petco. He's bringing him down. And the funny thing is, both of these teams come in tremendous in terms of the turnover ratio. Nebraska plus 16, Oklahoma plus 13. They have to get to that ratio today somewhere. Be on the plus side, you'll win this one. Very discouraging start for Keith and McCant, who is Tom Osborne's quarterback. He has fumbled twice and thrown one interception already. Second down for Gundy and the Sooners. The motion man is Ted Long. Gaddis, right side hole, cut back to the 32 and close to a first down. Perella, who has been so active defensively for the Cornhuskers, brings him down. Power off. 
off tackle play. Paul Moriarty, number 64, the offensive left guard, did a real nice job of pulling around at the point of attack. You'll see him at the left side of your screen. Now see him pulling right there. There he is. He's going to turn up in the hole. Watch that block right there. Nice job of blocking Petco, number 99, as he turns up and gives him that running room. So it's November 29th. Late in the year, but this is not Nebraska's latest home game. No, back in 1908, folks, they played the Carlisle Indians at Antelope Park. And Oklahoma passing about as much as Jim Thorpe and the Indians did that day as they keep it on the ground. As a matter of fact, in that game in 1908, Thorpe picked up a fumble, ran it 38 yards for the touchdown, and Carlisle beat Nebraska 37-6. And I think that some of these folks here today were also at Antelope Park for that. Yeah, I tell you, my grandfather told me you did a heck of a job of broadcasting that game. <laughs> he really enjoyed it. Uh, first down for the Sooners. A sea of red here in Lincoln. Doesn't make any difference what the weather is. These good folks will be here to watch their beloved corn hospitals. McKinley breaks the first tackle, but you get no more than a yard as Alberts records the stop. John Perella, number 92, the defensive right tackle, did a good job of collapsing on the trap block by Jeff Ressler on that, and he constricted what they call the freeze option play right to the point of attack. Shut it right off. The ball is at the Nebraska 29-yard line. Second down and nine for Oklahoma. The Sooners with the game's only touchdown. Nebraska bluffs a blitz. Gundy throws complete. First down, Oklahoma. It was Joey Mickey. He's only caught 12 balls coming into this ball game, and he started every game. So you see, they don't throw the ball to the tight end very often. That time, they do it effectively. And at the conclusion of this game, we'll select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And for the 21st year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of both Oklahoma and Nebraska. So the Sooners with their first pass of the afternoon, and they make it return a first down dividend, and then they pound right back with McKinley. Mike Anderson, number 48, did a nice job of filling that. He's really strong. He is the number one lifter in the Nebraska program this year, and Boyd Epley, their fine strength and conditioning coach, says this guy is a very powerful dedicated off-season trainer and love to play football. Just a sophomore. Jerry Anderson out of Grand Island, Nebraska. The Sooners on the move again. Gundy gets it to Gannis. And Gannis driven out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Ernie Beller among the Cornhusker defenders over there on that side. And again, a reminder now, if Nebraska can come back in this one, they would go to the Orange Bowl and take on Miami. That would send Oklahoma to the Gator Bowl and a meeting with Virginia. But if Oklahoma holds on here, then it'll be Colorado taking on Miami in the Orange Bowl. And we'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. And they have taken the ball to the Nebraska 16-yard line. This is a third and six. And Cale Gundy and the Sooners have converted three out of four third downs. Gundy starts the second quarter by taking his gloves off. He hands off and pounding right straight ahead is Mike Gaddis. Gaddis close to that first down for the Sooners. And here are the numbers from that opening quarter. The key here is the turnovers. You'll see turnovers, Nebraska three, Oklahoma one. That's plus two. That computes to be worth eight points. A turnover computes to be worth four points. So you're giving away a lot. Here's the measurement. And first down for Oklahoma. It'll be first and goal. Dick, let me ask you about Gundy. He started the game with the gloves and both quarterbacks having a lot of trouble with that center exchange. Well, I... You know, I have never been in favor of the gloves, though you see them worn all the time in the NFL, and they do a good job with them. Quarterbacks wear them and that kind of stuff. I would prefer to have his hands, in, you know, on the service. Some other people still have them on, though. You can see that. First 
down for the Sooners. Gaddis again, and he is hit at the six-yard line. Steve Carmer, the hard-hitting, strong safety, up to take on the tailback. What a season Carmer has had coming into the game with 75 tackles, and now he has the record for defensive backs at Nebraska with that hit. And if he can lead this team in tackles, he would be the first defensive back in the history of Nebraska football to accomplish that. And a big wahoo for Steve Carmer. Tenth play of the drive coming up and nailed on a cutback at the five. It was Pat Engelberg getting down grabbing a leg and making a wish. When you run inside, your nose guard has got to come up with a play. Pat Engelbert just was awarded an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship, and here he is battling in the pits playing nose guard on a miserable day. He's a tough, bright guy. Third and goal, will the Sooners put it up? <laughs> no, it's against the law. <laughs> Kenyon Rashid into the backfield. As the receiver goes in motion, you know who can battling short of the goal by a couple of yards now it is fourth and goal as Mike Anderson smashes into him first Tyrone Leggett got him second down goes the back coach Gibbs and Oklahoma with a decision to make here leading seven nothing I don't think there's a decision I think you go ahead and kick the field goal maybe not hey, they're not gonna normally when you're in a position to score you go with the guaranteed points they obviously don't feel their seven points or a ten point lead will be able to hold that up to the ball game, so they're going after it. Fourth and goal. Gundy wants it quieter. Crowd noise a factor down in the left end zone. So he'll bring the offense back and again a look at the noise rule and how it could affect the game. Referee using the timeout and the next time they would notify this huge crowd here and then step three would be a timeout or a five-yard penalty if the timeouts are exhausted so this can get pretty costly it can get costly and also this slows down the offense and what you've got to do you make sure you don't lose your concentration and you start thinking about the crowd noise rather than the football game one of the problems with kicking a field goal is the fact that they're over on the left hash mark. The kicker at Oklahoma is more comfortable from the right hash mark. And with all these turnovers, Coach Gibbs probably believes that you're going to have to get more than one touchdown. Let's see what they come up with now on fourth down. Gaddis to the middle, to the top, and stop short of the end zone. No, they give it to him. Oh, I thought for sure Nebraska had him short of the end zone. There's a penalty flag now thrown from the far side as Gaddis, with his second effort, battles on into the end zone for Oklahoma. We have solved the issue of the flag. That was an orange tossed over there. The extra point is good. Scotty Blanton makes it 14-0. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back and review that touchdown. It was close. Again, it will not be definitive on these replays, and we'll show you why. It was Gaddis pounding in on fourth and one. Now the person who had the best view is a linesman coming down. Watch immediately as he views where Gaddis is with the football, the arms will come up. He did not hesitate with his call. It is 14-0. The short man fields it for Nebraska. And he'll bring it out to the 43-yard line where Nebraska will put it in play, first and 10. And now the Cornhuskers, who have turned it over three times, will try to protect the football. As Oklahoma 
takes two of those turnovers and punches in for two of its touchdowns. Well, Tom Osborne told me his number one concern was the weather. He felt their offense was very explosive, very sound, error-free, but if the weather was bad, it would be a problem for his style of offense. Second quarterback, it's, or I should say second quarter, so Calvin Jones. He's the freshman sensation, number 44, 13 touchdowns on the season. And what an afternoon Jones enjoyed against Kansas. 294 yards and six touchdowns. Both Big A records. And he backs up Derrick Brown. So a wealth of talent at that famed Ibach spot here at Nebraska. Second down for the Cornhuskers. They trail it by two touchdowns. Need to get something going here in the first half. Jones at midfield, pounded by Stacy Dillard. You know, Jones is a little more physical in size than Derek Brown at 210 pounds. They say this guy could graduate being the finest running back they've ever had here at Nebraska. Now, that's saying a lot when you talk about the Johnny Rogers and the kind of people that have come through this program. What a difference it's been for Oklahoma. Their offense has been able to play on a short field on two fumbles by the Nebraska quarterback McCant. They've been able to move in for touchdowns. Nebraska 0 for 3 in converting third downs against this OU defense. McCant faking. Now he'll throw to a wide open Mitchell. And the Nebraska tight end comes up with a big play to the Oklahoma 13 yard line. It'll be first down Nebraska. You'll see right here the action like this, and then the quarterback coming out of way freezes the linebackers inside. See, they lose where the tight end is. Now, see, he comes up crossing underneath it. There he is, right in the middle of the zone. No linebackers there because the action really froze him to the line of scrimmage. Biggest gain of the day as far as a single play is concerned. 31 yards, McCamp to Johnny Mitchell. This has been an offense featuring the big scoring play as Jones. Fumble, Oklahoma pounds. And the ball was marked down. The official said he was down and no fumble. Sometimes this is a reason not to rotate running backs in there, Brent, because, uh, you know, the guy comes off the bench, he's a little bit cold. Sometimes you're better off keeping a guy in there and keeping him warm and, and don't fool around with him. Second down for the Cornhuskers. They bring Mitchell on the tight end around, short of the first down as Chris Wilson makes a spectacular defensive play for the Sooners. This guy, Johnny Mitchell, is so talented in that athlete. He's got 12 touchdowns already in his first two years playing tight end. Very gifted. Had a big game in the Citrus Bowl. There he is in the middle of your screen, number 86. Now watch him come around. Fake handoff, handoff. And this guy can also throw the ball both left and right-handed. So you better watch out. Nate Turner just could not get the job done blocking. The smaller wide receiver was assigned to Wilson, and he couldn't handle him in that situation. And Wilson broke away and caught Mitchell. Now it is Jones. Spectacular run inside the 10-yard line. You know, when you can run direct like that, your inside offensive line has got to be doing a good job. Eric Wiegert, Jim Scott, and Will Shields really came off the ball nicely on that play. Nothing fancy, north-south running. There's that little quickness with that step that Jones demonstrated when he came up behind his offensive line. Here he is coming right at you. You can see what these linebackers have to face. There's Wilson, number 30, trying to get up there and get him. But when the offensive line knocks people off the ball, it's tough for the linebackers to move in cleanly and get the direct shot because they're stepping over their own bodies. And just enough to get a first down. It'll be first and goal for Nebraska. Protecting the football has to be uppermost in Osborne's offense right now. They've turned it over three times here in the first half. The Sooners lead it by two scores. They're in an unbalanced line right now. McCant brings the option. Going to keep it. Broke for the first tackle and made his way to the five-yard line. That was Bowden. 
hitting him first and the quarterback broke away and got to the five yard line. See McCant has already learned from his first mistake on the fumble on the one option. He held the ball out there in his pitch hand. As soon as he felt there was people around him, he pulled it in and protected that football and became the runner himself. You see what I'm talking about? See both hands up. Now he's got one hand on it. Now he's going to reach. No, he can't get there. He's trying to get that other hand on it. That's it. Now keep it on it. Oh my gosh. That's the coach's contract you've got in your hand. Second down and goal for Nebraska. Jones to the two. It'll be third and goal, Nebraska. Direct football. Big Lance Lundberg, number 77, the offensive left tackle that time, did a good job. He wasn't at the point of attack, but he kept blocking, and they were allowed the running back to keep sliding the lawn in the scrimmage till they found an offensive lineman that whipped somebody. And big old Lance at 290 pounds got the job done. Omar Soto, the fullback. It trips. Quarterback Keith and McCamp stumbled, pulling away from center. Goes down at the five-yard line. Brent, I think Jim Scott, 51, and Keita McCann's feet got tied up right in the middle of your screen. You'll see it right there. See right here? Actually, no, it's Shields. Shields, left inside foot, stepping on the right foot. Oh, my gosh. He's on your side, Big Will. And Byron <laughs> Bennett trots on the field as the field goal unit is sent in here because the ball would be down at the five-yard line after the quarterback slipped. It would be fourth and goal from the five. So Nebraska settling here for a field goal attempt and anything to get on the board. Brian Bennett is nine for 16 in field goal attempts this year. Pretty good kicker. So Bennett puts the Cornhuskers on the scoreboard. 6.58 to go in the first half. A 22-yard field goal. In the decision down on the field, I don't think I would have my kicker kick the ball into the end zone. I'd just soon have him field that ball down there in that tough situation. He's got the wind to his back. Last time he kicked off, he kicked it in the back of the end zone. Kick it to him. Tink Collins and Otis Taylor back deep for the Sooners. it up. Taylor from the 14. Taylor with an alley that closes in a hurry. Wow. Down at the 28-yard line. You know, of the last 27 games between Oklahoma and Nebraska, the winner has come from behind 21 times. Just think about that. These people don't like each other on game day here. <laughs> That is remarkable so many times in big games. The team that scores first, even if it's a field goal, will win the game, but not on this show. The other thing is, two fine coaches have always been competing against each other. You know, the Barry Switzer and the Tom Osborne in many of those football games. So uh, they did a great job of coaching and bringing their squad back each time. Hill Gundy and the Sooners with a 14-3 lead and a first and 10. And here comes Mr. Gaddis. Hammered at the 30, Engelbert, number 97, was there defensively. Engelbert makes those plays off the nose guard. He has good, good lateral movement coming down the line of scrimmage like that. He has five tackles for a loss through the season, so that shows he's been able to get penetration, work down the line of scrimmage, or, or upfield even, and make the plays. Albert Hall, the wide receiver out to the left. Ted Long in the slot for the Sooners. part of their day has been going in motion. The fullback, Rashid, twisting away to the 32-yard line. It'll be third down for the Sooners. 48, Mike Anderson did a real nice job of playing inside linebacker there. He scraped off nicely, moved inside out in the play, and attacked it. And he got a lot of help from the other people in red as well. But Mike did a nice job there. The leading tackler on this Cornhusker defense, better than... 
you know, at least of the front seven, Carmer overall leads the defense. But Anderson now, counting this afternoon, has 72 tackles on the season. So here's the third down. Is it getting darker here, or are my glasses getting fouled up? It's getting darker. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, we believe you. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a timeout. It was called by Nebraska. Their first timeout. Five and a half minutes to go. And Oklahoma with a 14-3 lead in the big one. Hey, D, D Brown, what are you doing here in New York? He's here in Lincoln, and folks, this may be <laughs> the loneliest man in the world, the security guard atop that tower. And only twice since 6-1 and one has the winner failed to win or share a Big 8 title. Nebraska could keep that string intact, but if Oklahoma wins, then Colorado captures the Big 8 outright and heads to the Orange Bowl. Third and fourth, the 32 for the Sooners. And everybody moving in that line, and the flags come flying. I think now... Big Brian Broninger, number 66, the left tackle, was the first to move. We'll see how the officials saw it. No procedure. Five yards. Offense. We can Boy, in an Oklahoma and almost style offense, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. Now you got the third and long. You see Kale Gundy right there moving his head around a little bit, shaking his hips, but it's the offensive, both offensive tackles. They were on a different wavelength in the huddle that time. See, you would have known if they'd have given you the number like they should. Yeah. You still won't buy that rule change <laughs> that I want to make. I don't want to put any more pressure on these kids. Come on. Third down now. Nine yards to go for the Sooners. And timeout being called by OU. Bowl and the Gator Bowl and how about the seasons turned in this year by Kansas State and Kansas we've got to say something about those two coaches coach Snyder at Kansas State coach Mason at Kansas really did outstanding job outstanding coaching and you know other coaches in the conference and around the country are talking about these guys as well they're complimentary of the job these guys done a lot of respect given to those two people well, Nebraska has scored 78 points more than Oklahoma versus common opponents. Nebraska has given up 40 more points in the same game. The toughest part of the season, though, as far as that man is concerned, was losing early in the year when Washington came from behind. That seemed to soil the Cornhuskers' reputation. Remember, Coach Osborne's had some difficulty against ranked teams over the last few years. You know, I think people tend to over-evaluate and estimate how good athletes he has here. You know, they didn't have one offensive player drafted in the draft last year. Not one guy. But they had 60 defensive guys. players, and they gave up 45 points in each of their last two games. Now it's Gundy over the middle, complete. Fumble. No, he is down. The officials are waving off. You know, it looked They're saying me. that he was juggling the ball and never had it. Okay. The one official yeah. was saying. Did not have possession. He did not have possession, and it's fourth down. Here it is to the left center of your screen. Now he goes for the catch. That's a catch. That's a catch. Come on, give me That's a, a reception. That is a completed pass and a fumble. Well, Steve, no question. Knocked the ball free. Officials, it's only a matter of life and death that you make the right calls out there. <laughs> she is fourth down. <laughs> Oklahoma with a low punt, and they're going to get all the best out of this one. Get away from it. Kicked it at the 42-yard line, so missing that play cost him about 10 yards, really. And a reminder that tonight, ABC, we have to stay tonight. Which one are we going to watch? I'm going to get close to a heater in a bowling alley. <laughs> oh, hey, we'll win this match. We'll win it this time. I promise you I'll make a contribution. First down and 10. It's the fullback, number 25, Omar Soto. Speaking of that Washington game, Soto suffered a broken leg. 
in the first quarter of that Nebraska Washington game and here he is now nice to see Soto back on the field for the Corn Huskers. You know he's from Miami. Now I wonder what's going through his mind right now. If I had stayed in the state would the weather be the same. It's really starting to come down out there right now. There is more wind. The rain is coming down as hard as it has all day. Nebraska trailing it 14 3. Second down. McCann diving incomplete at the 25 yard line. Abdul Muhammad gave it his all. You know, Keaton McCant made a fake to the running back on that, and it looked from here, now the weather's bad, I'm not sure I saw it right, but it looked like he bobbled the ball after the fake, re-caught the ball, then threw the pass. 4.29 left here in the first half. Can you imagine that Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy would oh, want to go see, down they, to they aren't tough. this week? I don't think they're tough. They can't handle no, it. They, they can't couldn't handle it. Huh? No. no. That greasy Miami <laughs> Dolphin guy, you know. Well, he came out of Purdue. He's been around some they're, bad weather. They're probably in the golf course. Jackson, you know, Westwood, California. Yeah. Not tough. Now it's third down. Here is Jones to the 49, short of the first down, however, by a good three yards. So the punter will come on the field as Ricky Wren tripped him up. They should come out of this with real good uh, field position. That is Nebraska should. It'd be kind of interesting if Oklahoma fumbles it then, right? Is that what you're predicting? No, I'm not predicting that. The Oklahoma hasn't had a great year in returning punts. They're only averaging 6.3. That's last in the Big Eight. I thought the field position went to the team that was going to get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the punt by Nebraska. And it takes what else? And Oklahoma bounce. Biggie's punt bounced the wrong way. You know, I talked to Lord Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator. Dick, let me interrupt you for a second sure. because a reminder of what we've got coming up. We'll take a look at some highlights here from the first half. And, you know, there's so much talk about bowls and playoffs. We're going to have a mythological playoff system that we're going to show you. And then we will preview the Florida State-Florida game coming up at halftime. It's all on the Prudential Halftime Report here on ABC. Obviously, Cheryl Miller found that heater down the side. <laughs> we haven't heard from her for a while. No, she, I, dis she disappeared on us yeah. as Mike McKinley gets the carry. <laughs> Kim, call, our producer, calls down Cheryl. Ah, shut up. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. <laughs> She's back in that Nebraska weight room. <laughs> there we are, folks, somewhere up there. <laughs> I'll get back to that point I was going to make. Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, made the statement yesterday he did not think the weather would be a negative for their style of offense. If anything, he thought it would be their advantage because they, they came here to run and they were going to run straight upfield most of the time. Oklahoma 14, Nebraska 3. Looks outside, short of the first down as Curtis Cotton runs about. You were telling me about Cotton's remarkable strength. Well, in, in talking to Boyd Entley, the fine strength coach here, he told me that Curtis Cotton, pound for pound, is the most powerful football player that's ever played at Nebraska since he's been there. Boy, they've that's quite, hard. hey, they've had some good ones, too. Uh -huh. Their off-season program is second to nobody's. I've never seen so much equipment. He's got some strength in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Third down for Oklahoma. Hale Brett. Gundy. And Can he'll call time out. They bluffed the blitz. They moved the linebackers. They walked him up in the hole. And so Gundy didn't have the play to answer that. And he called the timeout. It was kind of interesting as he called the timeout. The backers had stepped back away from that. So it's 14-3, and we'll be right back. We're in Nebraska, 14-3 so far in the first half, and a rainstorm in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now third down for the Sooners. The ball is on their own 32, and the hand to the fullback, and he gets the first down, McKinley. 
depending on where they spot that ball they're going to spot it at the 38 and that would be enough for the first down if they put it right down on the 38 they'll get the first down they have huge offensive line splits in there and he spread it out and he bounced it to the outside and actually the ball hit uh, a little bit before 30 <laughs> safe he's saying i made it <laughs> thought he was going to do the butterfly through that water <laughs> the breaststroke there now let's see where they did spot this one first down the crowd did not like that spot you know this is one of the few places in the nation where if you come to watch a football game they will boo a bad spot folks in nebraska they <laughs> a good idea what goes on down there. Oh, do they ever. There's a guy that knows what's going on down there, too. Nobody does it any better than this guy. He and the Paternos, you know, they're in a class with the, the Persigians and the Bodens and all those guys. Sort of a league by themselves. First and ten for the Sooners. Gattis was caught by Jamie Lewis. Again, the backside pursuit coming down as a defensive lineman. That means your offensive tackle is not doing a good job of cutting him off. When Lever comes down the line of scrimmage like that, he should be cut off by an offensive lineman. He didn't get it done. Now, you'll see the left side of your screen. Now, watch him come down. See, they tried to block him, but he was moving in the direction of the play, and they couldn't get him cut off. He really pulled the lever on that one, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he pulled the lever. He's been doing it a long time. He had 13 sacks in high school his senior year, so he knows where the ball is. Second and long. Gaddis again behind the right side. And this is going to be third and long from the 36-yard line as Travis Hill whacks Gaddis. I have a feeling that the Nebraska defense has really uh, gained a little confidence in stopping Oklahoma's direct offense and they ran a little more efficiently in the first half than they're running right now. And when you consider the turnovers, I think they've handled the turnovers mentally real well. It's almost like Oklahoma's trying to run out the clock here in the first half, isn't it? Well, you know, there's only a minute six to go, and they came here to run the football, emphasize Gaddis, and then mix Kale Gundy in it once in a while. 14-3 lead in these conditions would be good for the Sooners. On third down, they use fullback McKinley, and Travis Hill buries him at the 40-yard line. So Nebraska will get it back with at least a few seconds left on the clock. Now, the Oklahoma fans are going to say, what did he run that dumb inside play for? What it was was a trap play, and that's usually a good call against a pass rush type defense. This time it didn't work, but it is a sound call. Timeout call by Nebraska with the Sooner punter, Brad Riddell, on the field. Would you try to block this one? The yes, would. 42 seconds to go. I mean, you could you could actually run into the... Even yeah. if you give Oklahoma a first down, it's going to be tough going. I don't think they'd go into the two-minute uh, passing game at this time. We'll see if Tyrone Leggett... Corey Dixon back to return the punt for Nebraska. And now they'll try to get Leggett in from the outside. They'll try to circle him in. And Oklahoma blocker has him eyed on the outside. Very wide spacing for this punt rush team. And Riddell just does get off a low one. They have about 30 seconds left here in the first half. by that young man against the Nebraska punt rush here in the first half. He's been in some miserable conditions through the years in this game, that man right there. 6-13 and 13 overall against Oklahoma in his career. Jones steps to the 28-yard line. Bowden's tackle for Oklahoma. Boy, he's made a lot of, you said earlier, that you mentioned how many tackles he's made, but first team all Big 8 last year, and he was a Prop 48 guy, you know, and he's doing real well. Nebraska penalized. An illegal procedure against them. But getting back to Bowden, 269 tackles coming into this game in his career. That's a lot of tackles. He'll, he'll make a lot in the NFL one day, too. 
lot of guys from Oklahoma, from Texas, huh? You bet. Mesquite, Texas. Is that where the firewood comes from? The barbecue and wood I always get? Oh, sure. Is that where it is? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> That's a way to be positive. Jones breaks free. Shows a little stuff. Still going. Look out. Did he step out of bounds? He's out of bounds, folks. Jones stepping out of bounds on the near side at about the 36-yard line. Otherwise, hello, end zone. His middle initial should be E. Calvin Explosive Jones. He is going to light up the scoreboard here over the next few years. yard run so Nebraska using a timeout McCant going off to Osborne's sideline take a look at this one Dick and see if you can see him going out of bounds just a good draw play and the center does a nice job on Dillard number 77 now he's working up field again running through tackles he switches the ball. Now watch him as he comes close to the goal line. The goal line. Sideline right there. Let's see if we can see where he went out. There's the official bringing Marking his arms right up. there. He's right, yeah, right back there. After a 19-yard run. You saw him switching the ball as he was running. A lot of coaches teach that. You know, I did not teach that. Maybe I was wrong, but I said, if you you if you have a favorite arm to carry the ball in, leave it there. Just Wil leave Wilbert it there. never switched it? Not without my permission. Got it. <laughs> no, actually, I didn't you say know, much to him. I said run. We, we should give you an award. <laughs> You've gone the whole year without mentioning Wilbert Montgomery on the air. That's a record. I tell you, though, a little while ago, I turned to your sidekick there, Jimmy Tubbs, and I said, uh, Calvin Jones reminds me of Wilbert. <laughs> Final seconds here in the first half. Weather conditions have been raw and tough for these two teams. We've had four turnovers in the first half, and uh, the folks that have really had it tough have been these loyal fans here in Lincoln today. But they come regardless of the situation. Remarkable loyalty through the years for this football team. And this will bring the first half. Well, hold on, we've got one second as Mitchell Got out of bounds. You see how he, this weather, bad weather, bad conditions, ball probably wet by the time it gets there because it's flying through the air, and this guy reaches up and just plucks that ball out like he's playing in Miami. I think he does want to go to the Orange Bowl. Take a look at this catch. Watch him now. Big, strong guy that grew on. Great catch. You know what's interesting about the young man? He came out of, I believe it was Simeon High School. I know he's out of Chicago. He was a, he was a Prop 48, which means he did not qualify academically his first year. Folks, he made the all-academic team in the Big 8. If you go throughout college athletics, so many of those youngsters who had to sit out the first year have come back and really been good students. Makes you wonder if freshmen all should be sit out, doesn't it? There's the pass to Mitchell. This will bring the first half to an end. Oklahoma with the lead, 14-3 to here in the first half. We had four turnovers, three of them by Nebraska. And down we go to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Coach Gibbs, the weather is absolutely terrible, but so far it hasn't really affected your team. Well, it has, you know, the as far as your footing, holding on the football, some things we want to try to do, but we just got to go out and continue to play through the elements to secure the football. You're going into the second half with an 11-point lead. Are you going to continue to keep the ball on the field? Are you going to put it in the air? Well, again, we've got to try to secure the football. We want to be able to throw it, but we got to be able to secure it from the, from the quarterback to the, from the center of the quarterback. And, you know, we just got to, again, try to get Mike Gaddis loose a little bit. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. So Oklahoma leading Nebraska 14-3. to And if this continues, it'll be Colorado going down to Miami again. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Well, the first one is uh, Kale Gundy's. Oh, excuse me. We're back here with the these are the stats the from the uh, from the half that we can uh, 
we can take a look at. You can see the turnovers down there. Nebraska has turned it over three times, one of them resulting in a, uh, in a touchdown. As far as the yards rushing concerned in this game, Oklahoma with 102 to Nebraska's 90. The minus two in turnover is the thing here, Brandon. Also, Oklahoma with possession. Here's Gundy, just a quarterback sneak from the one-yard line. Good blocking by number 64 on the left-hand side, Paul Moriarty. Seen he just crushes his way in there following Randy Wallace. Then comes another big turnover. Keith and McCants going down the line of scrimmage on the option. Nicely defense. They string him along. Now, see, he's got the ball in his right hand. He wants to thinking about pitching it, thinking about pitching it. Now, watch him right there. Number 88 reaches up there and trips it out. Good job by Trey Tippins. The ball's on the ground. It now belongs to Oklahoma. Then comes Gaddis for the touchdown. They hand it back to him real deep. They secures it nicely. See, he has plenty of time to leap, fight his way, and they, close call, but he was in the end zone for the touchdown. Here's the Nebraska possessions in the first half. They've really had... Uh, poor field positions themselves and they haven't been able to do very much with it as the graphics show look at the yards made minus one I felt in the second quarter though Brent they started to pick up offensively and uh, appeared to be more competitive with what they were going to be able to do Oklahoma was the one they had the good field position start on the 33 hey five plays 33 yards touchdown own 42 they were forced to punt yards made minus one then again they get the ball on a fumble on the 31 uh, they had the ball on the 42 that's a short field to play on touchdown the last two times they had the ball they were starting like a team normally starts with a long ways to go they had a punt it our crowd today in Lincoln 76,386 are they loyal or are they loyal just absolutely unbelievable, folks. Freezing rain, watching, coming back now into their seats here as we start the second half. As Oklahoma comes out of its locker room here on the near side, leading 14-3. And Nebraska must pull this one out, or they will be headed to the Gator Bowl, where they will play a tough Virginia team if they draw that matchup. Beware Virginia of the ACC right now and to start the second half it'll be Nebraska's ball and interestingly enough Oklahoma and here's a key moment Oklahoma won the toss and deferred and they have elected to go on defense to start the second half they want to defend that north goal that's what they wanted to do right here so they're going to kick it off to start both halves you don't see that too often in a college football game. Not very often, but it was a good decision to be made, as we mentioned that early in the ball game. Now they have Nate Turner back there at the right safety. Not normally a kickoff return guy. Again, he's a receiver, a multi-purpose guy, carries the ball once in a while. Turner and Hughes there on the right side of your screen. That's Turner, number 22. Hughes, again, remember, has that cast on his hand. And the punter for Oklahoma, Brad Riddell, with the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line. I think Keita McCants had to gain a little confidence in that second quarter as he finished because he threw some complete passes to his tight end. He's got to feel confident that he can throw the ball in this weather. Hughes will field it. One yard deep, and he's coming out. Up the middle, it explodes to the 30-yard line. Spirited return by the young man with the broken hand, and that could give Nebraska a little bit of a lift here as Keith and McCann. He got a good wedge movement. The wedge timing was perfect. See, he decides to bring it out. He had straight up field. The wedge in front of him now was exploded, and they're getting blocks upfield, created a crack right there that you saw. And again, he's attacking the coverage people. Derek Brown at eye back to start the second half. Calvin Jones outrushed him when he was in the game in the second quarter. Nebraska goes back to Brown. This is Brown blasts his way to the 41. Here come the Cornhuskers. Derek Brown, a California athlete, La Habra, California, out of Servite High School. Loves it back here. I toss. Gets a good block there at the point of attack by Will Shields pulling out. He hits that crack. Now look at him get his pads down. He's protecting that football. Gets the hand down again. I, I tell you this. They gain confidence at the end of that second quarter. 
an 11 yard gain and he broke a tackle by the normally reliable Joe Bowden to get about five yards of it. Now it's first and 10. They'll go right back to Brown behind the right side of the line to the 47 yard line and Chris Wilson making the stop. You're talking about a guy that's run for over 100 yards eight times this year running for an offense. It's the number one in the country 517 yards. Not getting any warmer, is it? No, it's not getting any warmer. That's why. What's the difference between ice rain and ice drizzle? Huh? I thought it might warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Again. Gets the play at the line. Eric Brown again going to the right side and stop short. And Dick, they are definitely favoring. They're a right-handed running team. They have shown us that almost all game long, haven't they? They like to run up behind big Brian Borboom, number 76, at two, six foot seven, 290 pounds, and Will Shields, who they consider maybe their most gifted athlete in the offensive line. The success of Nebraska's running attack, like Oklahoma's, is all centers around the ability of the fullback to block. Third and short. He's audibling. Brown for the first down. You know, Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, a real fine football coach, told me yesterday that they're very proud of their stats and, and being the number one defense and being the number 10 defense in the country. But he said he hadn't defensed a team with the explosiveness and the big play ability of Nebraska. So today would be a better indication of how good they really are defensively. On first down. Bit of a delay with Brown. And he blasts inside the 45-yard line. Real good block by offensive right guard Will Shields. It almost uh, gave him enough room to turn up inside and get the good break. You'll see from the right side, you'll see him pull number 75. Here he comes right here. Both of them pull, actually, but follow the offensive left guard Will Shields as he gets the kick out box. And they have Chris Zesta in there right now rather than Shields. They just took him out. They should report to me first, shouldn't they? <laughs> this is an offense with... 59 yard, 59 touchdowns on the season, looking for their first touchdown of this game against Oklahoma. Going back to that delay, Brown close to another first down. If they don't have a first down, they'll have third and short as Ray gets the stop for the Sooners. Brian Borboom, the big offensive tackle that time, used a cross-block technique, which you don't see very much by a tackle. Did a good job, but was effective. Blocked the point of attack, moved the ball. Here's big Brian Borboom, majoring in physical education. He's certainly physical enough. Look at that neck on that guy. Only the Borboom family in Colorado Springs is pulling from Nebraska. The rest of that state solidly behind the Sooners. Third and two. Brown gets the call for the first down, and he is running for some tough yards here in the early going in these weather conditions. You know, and that 185-pound back ran into a 230-pound linebacker in Joe Bowden, and we know how good he is, and he moved the stack. Good job, Derek. Look for Tom Hayes to come with some kind of a stutter blitz here on first down. They haven't been throwing. They can take a chance with man-to-man -man coverage and get some pressure on this offensive line right now. 36% of Osborne's touchdowns this year have come from at least 25 yards out. This has been a big play bunch. And throws down the middle to Mitchell for his fifth catch at the 10 yard line. Big play Mitchell. Well executed by Keaton McCants. A good fake. You'll see the play action here now. He comes out there. Now watch him come out off the other side. Now he, no pressure, nothing around him. Now finds the crossing receiver, throws it down there. Looks like a lame duck, but it gets there, puts it away, moves the ball. Mitchell's 29th catch of the season. He leads the Cornhuskers. That for 23 yards. 
And a first and ten from the 11. Back they come with Brown. And he makes his way to the six-yard line. And the Cornhuskers with the opening series are threatening. And I go back to that kickoff return by Tyrone Hughes with the broken hand. That inspired this team. And he came out with, you know, real vengeance and real intensity. And the whole drive has been intense ever since. Now the Sooners need a defensive stand. Could use another one of those turnovers. Second down for Nebraska. McCann keeps it for the end zone. Touchdown, Cornhusker. You'll see what the fake for the quarterback does to the inside of the defense. It freezes him. See, it fakes inside. Now, he keeps the ball. He gets a good block there by Wiegert, number 61. Now, see, they're going to the pitch. Charlie Franks, number 15, had to go for the pitch, man. No one took the quarterback. Option effective touchdown. So the oranges come flying out of the stands here on Lincoln as now both quarterbacks have rushed for touchdowns and you can see some of the players over there on the Nebraska sideline handling those oranges with tender loving care over there you don't think Miami wouldn't feel good for this bunch right now oh <laughs> Byron Bennett adds the extra point Nebraska pulls to within 10. If a team's coming from behind, it must be Oklahoma and Nebraska. We'll be right back. Nebraska, it is electric. 14-10. Nebraska coming from behind, and that has been the history of this series. 21 of the last 28 games. The winner has come from behind. And now it's Nebraska trying to dig out. Down by 14. They kicked a field goal. And now on their first series, they have their first touchdown of the afternoon. Oklahoma needs to answer here with a strong offensive series. Tim Collins tripped up and down at the 13-yard line. First and 10. And they'll be working now against this hostile crowd. We go to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? For Britain Dick, in order to keep the ball dry on the sidelines, we use them ball dry. They stick the ball in this back, shake it around, kind of like shake and bake. The salt in the ingredients here keeps the ball dry. Now, all I need to do is sprinkle a little bit of salt myself, and maybe I can keep dry. All right, Cheryl. We'd like to apologize to some of the folks watching. As you can understand in these conditions, we're battling the elements here, too, with some of our equipment and it has not been functioning as perfectly as it might be. And there was a malfunction on that play as Oklahoma had a first down. Look at the orange on the turf. People are thinking the orange bowl. See it right here? <laughs> you know what hit that? You know, forget about that. That's what hit Gundy. Oh, someone threw it at him, huh? Yes. This is, he's a... That's not the like the Nebraska, Nebraska fans. This is a fella. This is a lot of baloney. There's no need for that. You're hurting our football team if you want to behave that way. <laughs> so Tom Osborne on the field to warn the crowd. those oranges away because he took quite a blow. First down, fake by Gundy incomplete. And it'll be second down. Albert Hall, the intended receiver. They wanted to run a little hitch and go, Brent, and it was good coverage all the way by Curtis Cotton. Did not fool him at all. the 
14-yard line and stopped. You know, that's one of Oklahoma's favorite running plays, the free op freeze option up inside. They haven't made an inch with that. They might as well eliminate that from the rest of the game plan. They haven't <laughs> made a foot. They might come off with that with the option and keep it here pretty quick, though, and get a big play. could not throw the ball when he got back there and set up. The coverage had taken it away. He's back there sitting. He see wanted to throw it to his left. There's no place to throw. And here comes Travis Hill, number 293. Just relentless pressure. He just kept coming. So the OU punter coming out of his own end zone. And this is Dixon. It'll go out of bounds, and it's going to be superb field position when we come back to Lincoln. Nebraska's ball, and they'll have a chance. Huskers with their best starting field position of the day at the 44-yard line. We are down to covering this game with three cameras right now, having lost a couple up on top. Scored moments ago, running into the end zone for the five. Tosses to Brown. Brown looks for room on the right side. And he is out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Real good block by the offensive right guard, number 64, Chris Zeta. He pulled around and he sealed that corner and stayed on his feet and just drove the man right out of bounds. Technicians stay with it. We've got two repaired. Now we're back to five. <laughs> we're back to five. Well, the sound system's working right now, too. Well, if Drew Esikoff is the director he's been telling me that he is for the last few months, he'll make two. Second down. Brown. First down, Nebraska. Bowden tackles him for OU. The offensive line surges right now are just superior. Brian Borbum over there on the right side, number 76 at 290, and the tight ends coming off the ball. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. Look for Tom Hayes to come with some kind of inside linebacker blitz or, or bring the two outside backers off the corner. First and 10. Remember, this is a Nebraska team that turned it over three of its first four possessions, trying to protect the ball. The Sooners looking for another turnover. This is Brown on a cutback to the 30. He was forced to cut back by Proctor Land, number 97, who was showing a little of enthusiasm for his good play. But he did do a good job. He did good penetration, and he stopped the tackle that was trying to block him and forced it back up inside. Play selection. <laughs> That's a, even a little more running ratio than they have been going all year. I remember Barry Switzer throwing the ball more than that from the bone. <laughs> Second down. McCann off a nice fake. Rolls to the left. And out of bounds at the 24-yard line. William Washington. I'm not sure that that isn't his first catch of the season. It is his first catch of the season. No receptions this year. One catch at the Citrus Bowl last year. He's not big in the passing game, but I walked out of the locker room with yesterday, and he says, you know, I take great pride in my blocking, and sooner or later, they're going to throw me a ball. And they did. They just did it. Happy New Year. And he'd like to spend it in Miami. Nebraska could restore a lot of credibility to this program by coming back to beat Oklahoma and then going down and 
upsetting the hurricane. That would be huge for Nebraska football. Brown inside the 20 yard line. What a nice block by Lance Lewis, the fullback. You don't run up inside there with an eye play without your fullback doing a real good job. Follow the fullback as he goes in and takes on the linebacker. Watch it now. Watch him take him on. Boom! Right there at the point of attack. And he keeps his feet, sinks his rear end, and raises him up and allows him to run through there. Nice job, Lance Lewis. This is not going to be a game as Lewis goes off to the side. He's replaced with this offensive substitution package. This game is not going to feature the big play, is it? It's going to feature that trench warfare. Man to man. Brown steps through the middle for the nine-yard line and close to a first down. Perry Ray brings him down. Very good offensive line blocking. Again, again, good wide splits. See, they're spreading the defense out there. They're getting, getting them knocked off the ball. The good cutback block right there by number 61, Eric Wiegert on the linebacker. He broke behind that. He moved the ball another six, seven yards. Six more yards, and he'll have his ninth 100-yard game of the season. The sophomore eye back, Derek Brown, as he goes off for the time being, and Calvin Jones, who's got that quick step. So the changeup man here at the end of this drive, second and short, and the whistle had blown. Brent, this is what always scares me as a coach. Too much time against Nebraska. This is a costly penalty. It is costly, and what scares me as a coach, and sometimes you have to do it when you're running a back, but you send a guy in these weather conditions, it's been cold and sitting on the bench, not warmed up, first time in the ball game. now he's going to carry the ball. His chances of coughing it up are a little bit better than somebody else that's been in there. But this guy does know what he's doing, and he had to do it. Evidently, Derek Brown was wearing down this little bit. Derek Brown was apparently shaken up. That's the early finding from that Nebraska sideline. So they were forced to make the move. And now it's a much tougher second down. And Jones slips away for the first, but not the second. That was Belser and Tippins getting him first. Credit Tippins was setting it up. Trey Tippin had good penetration, and he hit him, but they're showing the great balance that Calvin Jones had. He tossed it to him deep. Now, you'll see the left side of your screen. You'll see Tippins getting in there. Good penetration right there. Knocked him back, but didn't knock him down. They are maintaining good footing in bad situations out there right now. Third down, and Oklahoma will try to keep an eye on Johnny Mitchell. The tight end is on the left side of this offensive formation. Linebacker steps up to attempt to jam him right there at the line. McCann. Wobs for Mitchell, makes a diving catch. He got off the line. Johnny Mitchell, a superior athlete, had the opportunity to visit with his dad in the locker room yesterday, met his younger brother, younger brothers, 10 years old, 216 pounds, 86 in the middle of your screen, crossing to the left side of your screen. Now watch him make this nice reception. Thrown right where he had to, out there in front of him and away from the defender, but sure-handed in terrible conditions. Derek Brown returns. Wonderful catch by Mitchell. Six receptions on the day for the Nebraska tight end. First and goal now for the Cornhuskers. Keith and McCann bringing the option down the line, and he is caught by Joe Bowden. Got him down at the shoe tops. All the Nebraska quarterback down as the Cornhuskers are threatening to go ahead for the first time today. You can see why Joe Bowden was all Big 8 last year. He makes the plays. That one was a tough for, play for him to make because they ran a fake inside, and that slows down the linebacker, but he just ran past the fake knowing the quarterback was going to keep the ball. Oklahoma led it 14-0 in the first half before Nebraska kicked a field goal. Here in the second half, the Cornhuskers with a touchdown and threatening again. McCann off a fake to Brown. Forced back to the left. It's open. Hammered at the three-yard line. Chris Wilson, number 30. Well, I'll tell you, it scares you to death when you look up here and you see a quarterback 
scrambling with the ball in one hand. Granted, that keeps the defense concerned about he might throw the ball, but also you never know where the defender's coming from. You'll see he has it up. The coverage takes it away. He's under pressure right now. Now look at that ball in one hand. See? Look at that one hand. Now he can still throw. But I'll you, that's scary. Third down and goal. Just outside the one-yard line. Brown over the top and apparently short. Now Nebraska... They're on the left hash mark. Reggie Barnes stood up tall in that defensive line and then submarine underneath at the goal line. The way they're running the ball and the momentum they have, it's the thing to do now is to go for it. Don't think field goal. You, you're, you're psychologically, you're on top of it right now. Don't do anything to break that, that edge. Of course, if you don't score, you break the edge. This would be huge for Oklahoma. This is the 12th play coming up. And it's big enough the timeout is going to be called. And it was Oklahoma that called it. It was the defensive team that wants to huddle up over here on the OU sideline. Back in a moment. Decades. Here's another one. Fourth and goal. The ball down inside the one-yard line. The Oklahoma defense off the timeout now gets ready. Nebraska trying to gain the lead, Brown the tailback. It's the tailback, oh. hit beautifully by Stacy Dillard. Oklahoma with a great goal line stand, halts Nebraska and takes over. What a play. Great penetration. The only way that Stacy Dillard could get that kind of presentation in the goal line, one of the guards had to turn him loose in the inside gap. I don't know who it was, but somebody had to turn him loose in an inside gap. See, yeah, he jumped around. No, was on. He got underneath the offensive tackles where he came. He came underneath Stacy Dill. Making a big, big play. You know, they did that a week ago against Oklahoma State, Brent. Shut him out four bounds down here. What a wonderful goal line stand by the Sooners of Old Norman, Oklahoma. Two minute mark of the third quarter. Now the Cornhuskers come back and it's Engelbert with a big defensive play. Goal line, you should never get beat on your inside gap. That's a cardinal sin in offensive line play in the goal line area. Never get beat on your inside gap. I hope somewhere up above that Woody Hayes watches. <laughs> He's watching somewhere. Bob Devaney, he's here. Both those guys meant a lot to this rivalry. The fullback, Kenyon Rashid, gets the call on second down. Oklahoma, 111 yards total offense. Nebraska, 287. Those turnovers have put, put the game in the situation that first half into the command of Oklahoma. One minute left in the third quarter. On third, the toss to Gaddis. Goes far to the left. The defense stretches him out. And then what? Tyrone Leggett, number three. Tyrone Leggett, known for his pass coverage abilities, tied a school record with ace pass defense this year. Now he shows he can tackle like a linebacker. Good course, inside out, got his head across the bow, butted him and knocked him out of bounds, prevented the first down play. Nice job by Tyrone Leggett. Riddell standing back. In Oklahoma end zone again. Field position has changed dramatically this half. It has gone from favoring the Sooners in the first half to being all Nebraska. Getting an Oklahoma bounce. And it will roll down dead at the 48 yard line. And we can remind everybody that coming up Monday night, what a huge game this is for the Philadelphia Eagles. They cannot stumble now in their drive to get back to the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Houston Oilers are trying to wrap up that AFC Central. 
Warren Moon awfully tough down there in the House of Pain. Dick, your feeling about the Eagles and the Oilers Monday night on ABC? Well, I look for Reggie White of the Eagle defensive line and that crew to keep the game close enough to win for Philadelphia going in late as long as they can keep the quarterback healthy. If McMahon stays in there, they got a shot. Here it is, Keith and McCamp trying to do the job for Nebraska. And Derek Brown to the Oklahoma 46-yard line. And Ricky Wren there defensively. We mentioned a couple of legends as far as this series is concerned. Bud Wilkinson. I guess nobody dominated college football in the 50s like Bud did down there. Billy Vessel won a Heisman Trophy at Oklahoma. He scored three touchdowns in one of these confrontations in a 49-35 win by Wilkinson. Then in the 60s, it was all Bob Devaney when he took over, and this Nebraska team winning back-to-back -back national championships, the last time they've been able to accomplish that. And of course, in that series, Devaney, with that classic 20 years ago, come from behind win down in Norman. It's been that kind of a series, and we're coming up with the final 15 minutes of another one. The Orange Bowl on the line. If Nebraska comes from behind, they'll go play Miami. If not, it's Colorado. Coming back after this message and a word from our ABC station. They're so successful. They've racked up impressive numbers over the years with one statistic that no other school even comes close to. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln has produced more academic All-American athletes than any other university in the country. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln, champions of academic excellence. Another fourth quarter in the Oklahoma-Nebraska rivalry coming up. And one of the things about this rivalry, the players on both sides of the ball have had good relationships with each other. I think a lot of that is a testimony to, well, Barry Switzer. Once a game was over, it was over. Bob Devaney, he always felt the same way. And that's how these two schools carry on down here, year in and year out. It's really nice to see. Brown tripped up on another good play by Ricky Wren, number 92. You know, Ricky Wren has made two good plays in there, and the defensive coaches last night said that Ricky Wren is a little bit quicker. He's getting off the center's nose a little bit quicker. They might change up on how they try to block that guy. You'll see, Wren, what I'm talking about in this shot. He comes off the center's nose. There he is, to the, right in the center of your screen on the offensive center. Now watch him. See, he makes, makes the block, makes the block, reaches it, reaches it, overpowers him, makes the play follow up on that comment about this rivalry being carried on in the finest of college football traditions there has not been one single personal foul called today in this game and both sides have pounded away these miserable weather conditions fumble picked up on the bounce by keithan and now down from mitchell double team and mitchell got it how did he get that one <laughs> Nebraska-Oklahoma game can something like that happen, huh? Next, we need the Boomerowski. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the snap. You know, watch it. Fumble the snap here. He gets knocked out by his offensive guard. All right, now he picks it up. Now he throws it under pressure. Big Mitchell goes right up in between two people and comes down with a football, beating Charles Frank, number 15, for the ball. At number 19, Terry Ray. Mitchell with seven catches, 137 yards, 28 on that great catch. And it's the short man for the 16-yard line, Lance Lewis. But perhaps the, uh, the finest thing about Mitchell is that he is the Honda Scholar Athlete. This is brought to you by American Honda. Proud to support amateur athletics. He's a sophomore tight end. Last year he was Nebraska's first first team all Big 8 player as a freshman since 46. This year named to the all Big 8 academic team. That's as nice for a top 48 youngster Johnny Mitchell as those seven catches are. But right now the Nebraska fans will take the seven catches. There's the toss out of Brown on the option. And it was well defended. That was Charles Franks, number 15. You know, I, I don't like that style of option. I, I think you're better off to run the other style of option that they run the load option where they always block the guy that's assigned to take the quarterback. A little lower risk type play and a better chance for the quarterback to keep the ball. You know, one of the nicest parts about that Honda Scholar Athlete is the fact that Honda presents a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Nebraska. 
Johnny Mitchell doing a couple of things for his school here today. Came out of the city of Chicago. Third down. They're coming at him. Faces the blitz and with that speed moves away from it. Throws on the run incomplete. And Bostic complaining. John Bostic said he was interfered with at the two yard line. It was close down there. Franks had the coverage and did a good job. Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, came up with a good call that time. He brought the inside linebackers. He bought Bowden. He had good pressure from Proctor Land, and he forced him outside of the pocket. See, and also, I think this ball was just thrown on purpose incomplete. I don't think he was trying to just throw that one complete. To be Nebraska sends Byron Bennett onto the field to attempt the field goal. He's already made one of 22 yards. That was back in the second quarter. If good, it'll pull Nebraska to within one. It's a 33-yard attempt now by Byron Bennett. On its way. And it was beautiful. Right through there. <laughs> it's a one-point game. Oklahoma and Nebraska for <laughs> the back judge said no no it wasn't off to the side that one was perfect take a second look close real close but it counts folks this game has turned around since Oklahoma led it by two touchdowns at 12.39 in the second quarter, Nebraska has had 44 plays to Oklahoma's 15. And Dick, the question is, what can the Sooners do now to loosen it up a little bit? How should they come up here at the 20-yard line? How well, should they charge after this Nebraska defense? Well, with the momentum that Nebraska has, and they, they have not, Oklahoma has not been successful offensively doing what they've been doing. They've got to go ahead and throw the ball some, and they're throwing the ball into the wind. Remember, Gaddis came in here with back-to-back 200-yard -back games. He's been held to 54 yards. Gundy has thrown only three passes for Oklahoma for a total of 10 yards here this afternoon. He's completed only one. So now the young man for the Sooners. And they should almost come up like the game is tied. Forget the fact that they're ahead by a point. They should go after it here. First and 10 for the Sooners. Coming out from their own 20-yard line. And again, using McKinley. And McKinley breaks out of the pack. He's the young man who scorched Nebraska for three touchdowns a year ago in Norman. And he steps his way out for 21 yards. That's their best offensive play of the second half. Just a very basic, fundamental football play. Give the fullback the ball right up the gut come off the ball, block him, not trot blocking. Great block by the offensive right guard and center, uh, center Andy Wallace. And they don't give the ball to the fullback on that type of play very often. This is one for character as far as the Sooners are concerned. Gaddis to the 43-yard line. Alberts, number 34, there defensively. Trevor Alberts had a big game a couple weeks ago in sacking the quarterback, and he comes this into this ball game one of the better football students on the uh, team as well on the academic honor roll at 3.4 GPA, and he just makes an honor roll defensive play. Second down, Oklahoma. The fake to get us. Gundy rolls right. Keep it to the 48-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. He wanted to throw the delay pass to his tight end, but Travis Hill, the outside linebacker, lined up on him, stayed right on him. He was glued to him and wouldn't let him release cleanly. It was good discipline by Travis Hill. Third and three, Oklahoma. Nebraska's made it rain a little bit harder, Brent. <laughs> it's coming down harder now. McKinley, bust for the first down.
McKinley has been their short yardage runner. You can see he's short and squatty at six foot, 228 pounds, but he has that good low center for gravity, and he can take on blockers, or tacklers rather, and keep that ball going forward. Has 14 touchdowns in his career, so they give him the ball in the short yard situations and close to the goal line. Inches. They've got to go for it. you think they've got to go for it absolutely you can't make this you don't deserve the win you know I used to think that as a coach every once in a while and when we didn't make it I thought we still deserved to win <laughs> <laughs> Gundy himself that's how the Sooners scored their first touchdown he kept it and went for a yard. Boy, it's pouring. There's an idea of how the rain is pounding down here in Lincoln. And the officials will bring the chains out from the side for perhaps the most important measurement of the game. It'll be the most important until we get the next one anyway. I wonder who... Uh Coach Osborne has on the other end of those phones. <laughs> Who'd he dial up to get the rain to increase? <laughs> Not quite enough that time as Oklahoma gets the first down on Gundy's sneak. What a pleasurable day this would be for the state of Colorado if the Sooners can hang on. They're sitting back there in front of their fireplaces. Fort Collins and Denver and Boulder and Bay Aspen just dreaming of their Buffaloes going down to take on the Hurricanes. But they need this Oklahoma offense to keep it going. It's first and ten. They lead it 14-13, 9-48. Gaddis to the right. Gaddis. Brought down at the 46-yard line, and then he broke free. Curtis Cotton was there holding on to a young man who two years ago underwent major reconstructive knee surgery. It is remarkable that Gaddis has been able to come back and accomplish what he has done. Well, and just verifying what you're talking about, showing good power, not favoring a bad knee, and you know, they say he's not 100% back yet, but he sure looks like he is right here. I'd hate to try to tackle him when he gets to be 100. <laughs> I think you better stay up here. Yes, sir. Second down. McKinley to the 45. Fresh respect for the Oklahoma fullback from this Nebraska defense right now. And McKinley unhappy with himself that he wasn't able to break free for a few more yards that time. If it gets any wetter in this press box, I'm going to wonder why Mark Spitz is not working this game with me <laughs> instead of Dick Vermeil. <laughs> Don't count on me to help you out here. I'll I've been hit by I so many towels. And I can't even dog paddle. <laughs> <laughs> Third down for the Sooners. They need to get to the 38. On a cutback by Gaddis. He'll be short. What a nice tackle. Did you see Gundy get out and throw that block leading the way? That was Curtis Cotton who delivered that blow, by the way. You can see why he is uh, so powerful, or he demonstrated it right there. That's a hard tackle, one-on-one -on, -one on a real good back, because the footing is bad for both people. Now, Gundy does get a block, yes, but this was a critical block and a critical tackle. He's going to toss and he runs his own reverse. See, sometimes these plays are really good. Now Gundy's leading, number 12. Watch, get the block. See, he gets a kick out block, but watch this tackle. That was impressive to me. Right now, there. Oklahoma nice lines up in punt formation on fourth and two. And the Nebraska return team quickly hustles onto the field. They'll leave the full defensive team on there. They won't go to a punt return team. Charlie and McBride will leave the first unit defense on there just in case they try something differently. And they've got the sure-handed Bostic back deep to catch this punt. A penalty flag down as they ran off the clock. 
And that's what give the punter five more yards. They back it up. And it's being waved off. Yeah, Tom saying, what's that? And that apparently is being waved off, and now they go over to give an explanation to the Nebraska coach. 19 years at the helm. He replaced Bob Devaney. This is the first time that he's been the head coach that neither Oklahoma nor Nebraska has been ranked in the Associated Press Top Ten coming into this game. Nebraska City number 11, Oklahoma 19. <laughs> There's his featured punt of the day, and it has worked. That low-line drive that gets a bounce, and it'll be down at about the... No, it went into the end zone, the one official is signaling. The one official is signaling that the momentum of the defender took the ball into the end zone, and it's a touchback. The other official was downing it at the two-yard line. There's going to be a discussion down here about what's going to happen. The punt was from the... Oh, the 40-yard line. We're going to take a break here at the seven-minute mark. Here is the punt. Now, the rule book is clear. If the defender's momentum takes it into the end zone, it comes out on the 20. And that's indeed the he case. Had he had not it. wrapped it yeah. up. And the official standing right there, the side judge, makes a good call. We'll take a break and come right back. Caddyshack when he said, I don't think the hard stuff's going to come down for some time. <laughs> First and 10 now for the 20. Nebraska trailing it by a point. 14 13, 7 08 on the clock. The big play performer for Nebraska has been the tight end, Johnny Mitchell. This is the bluff reverse, and Jones keeps it and breaks out. Boy, that has a great effect on cutting the pursuit. See, they see that reverse action. The linebackers have to freeze for a second, and all of a sudden, they're not there to make the play. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. Follow the linebackers. They're going to run this guy back around and fake the reverse. That freezes the linebackers just for a step. Now watch. Now they toss it to him. As he freezes it right there, see now people stopped and looked at the reverse, and all of a sudden the linebacker, in that case 30, Chris Wilson, was one step late. Good design. 21 yards for the freshman Calvin Jones. Scored six touchdowns in a game earlier this year. And they come back with the freshman. Joe Bowden making the stop. Joe Bowden, he's an aggressive son of a gun. <laughs> now second down for Nebraska. Nebraska has outscored the opponents 124 to 49 in the fourth quarter in 10 football games. They, they want to make it 126 for sure. They yeah. trail it by a point. Six minutes on the clock. to the right and the well-rested freshman inside the 40-yard line the value of depth at that IVAC spot here in Nebraska now that, the offensive tackle Brian Borboom did an awfully nice job in his cross block and you'll see him pop up in the middle number 76 see now he blocks inside you see him right there that opened the hole now he gives this guy with the great 10 600 meter speed a chance to get out there and run on that rock Put that ice rink out there. Key to this game, as Jones rushes for 17 more, 11 carries, 81 yards, but the key has been the fact that Nebraska has not turned the ball over since early in this game. When they turned it over three of their first four possessions, now Jones again inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. It's a young man who hit Kansas with 296 yards. 294, actually. The old record here at Nebraska was Mike Rozier's 285. I wonder if the Nebraska defense is wearing down. You talked about earlier about how many more plays the offense has been on the field for Nebraska than Oklahoma offense. That means Nebraska defense has been on there for a long time. The Oklahoma defense. Oh, Oklahoma defense, excuse me. Second down. Jones around the left. Bowden couldn't bring him down. And he gets the 
first down. Joe Bowden had a shot at him at the 32 and couldn't bring him down. Real nice block to the point of attack by Johnny Mitchell, the, the tight end. The top of your screen, you'll see it right here. Just watch it right there. See, he gets a hook block. Now he's got Wigert, number 61, out in front of him. Now just good running skill. He runs out of the tackle of Bowden and heads upfield. First and 10 for Nebraska. Four and a half minutes. And the big fella, Johnny Mitchell. God, I'd never take him out of the game. <laughs> um, I agree with that. I blew him to the huddle. They line Washington up on the left side, and they run Jones in that direction. They give him the extra blocker, and Jones out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Wilson in hot pursuit. The old Washington Redskins counter gap play. Joe Gibbs told me years ago he got the counter gap play from Nebraska. That's the first time he really studied the play, and he studied it from the Nebraska people and what they were doing with it. A lot of confidence in their freshmen. Calvin Jones, a 205-pounder, he's out of Omaha Central High School. Sat out his redshirt year, and here he is. Second down. They'll use the short man, Soto. Soto stopped at about the 21-yard line for the game. Jones has rushed for 97 yards, and Brown for 98 yards on the game. Well, if you have a 100-yard rusher in your backfield in the National Football League anyway, you win 75% of the time. Now, I don't know how that relates to college football, but it sure helps when you've got a 100-yard rusher in your backfield. Omaha Central has turned out some dandy running backs. Earlier, Keith Jones and Leotis Flowers both signed with Nebraska, and the Cornhuskers will use a timeout. It'll also enable the defense of Oklahoma to come out and meet with their coaches right now. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Dick, your feeling is, in weather conditions like this, you like the power of football approach better than the option? Yes, I do. And actually, as we look at uh, Nebraska here, they have gone to more of the direct offense. That time, of course, that play was a counter gap outside to freeze the backers and then get those linemen out there in front. But they have gone to more of their power attack. We've got a moment here and let me remind you again that if you like golf and you know you don't even have to like golf come to think about it to enjoy the skins game and long john daly joins up the u.s open champagne steward jack nicholas and the defending champ curtis strange pga west akita california tomorrow 3 30 eastern 12 30 pacific that's always a wonderful show and here it's Oklahoma and Nebraska delighting us with another one of their dandies. See, they've got a third and three situation. I think automatically over there, they're thinking, all right, we have two downs for the first down. That's, at least that's how I would be thinking. And they hope to bring that clock down, too. If they're going to get in, they don't want to give Oklahoma a lot of time. That's the feeling Nebraska. As far as Oklahoma is concerned, they would love a turnover here. They haven't had one since early in the game. Jones, the lone running back. And they'll go to the freshman. Short of the first down. Greg Wilkins getting the stop for the Sooners, and it was a big tackle. Fourth and one situation again. Greg Wilkins made the play out of Vocational High School in Chicago. Number of Chicago football players on both sides here. Those are some of the players we didn't want at Northwestern. <laughs> I, I heard you were playing for the job, huh? You won the only game you ever coached here in the spring, You know, you? i got to tell you something about my friend Francis Bay. Sorry he lost his job this year, and I've told you this before. Yes, if I was you an have. NFL coach, I would hire Francis Bay in a New York minute as one of my assistants. Yeah. I think he's a wonderful coach. So we got a timeout called by Nebraska that'll leave the Cornhuskers with only one now in the three-minute mark. We'll be right back. I think he's better off spreading the responsibility on all 11 offensive players. Remember, Oklahoma's defense stopped Nebraska on fourth and goal here earlier in the second half. They're going to run the toss with Jones. First down, Nebraska. <laughs> he 
you called it. They ran the toss. To run the toss like that, you have to get a good block. William Washington, 89, did a good job. Weigert, number 61, got the nice takedown block out there. First down. Good block by 25, Soto. Boy, he blocks that way all the time, Brent. 103 yards for freshman Calvin Jones here today. Nebraska, since falling behind by two touchdowns, dominating plays, time of possession, but they still trail it by a point. Jones again, big hole on the left. Jones for the end zone. Nebraska leads for the first time. Backside blocking, see, draw blocking on the backside. Weiger turned him out. Now he's a big, huge hole in there. The backside linebacker came onside, couldn't get back in to make the play. And Nebraska will go for two. They lead it 19 to 14. They want to try to put the pressure on Oklahoma to go for two if they score here in the last three minutes, if they're going to get the two. Now the two would make the score 21-14. And this is when you go for it. This is figured out by a computer. <laughs> the computer's never wrong, is it? When you're ahead by... Well, when you're ahead by, by five, five, which is right, right there on there, the right-hand column. You go for two. So on this drive, Calvin Jones, nine carries for 78 yards. You can see why Calvin Jones came into the ball game, the number one scorer in the Big Eight, averaging 8.7 points a ball game coming in here. And he's only a freshman. The two big play performers, Calvin Jones and Johnny Mitchell today for Nebraska. And don't overlook what Derek Brown accomplished. And also, Keith and McCann settled down at quarterback. He was very jittery in the early going. And now the pressure will shift. First OU will see if they can stop this two-point conversion. Make the draw, McCann the throw for the two high and incomplete. Incomplete had it been intercepted, remember, that's a live ball down there in the end zone. And Nebraska suffered that fate at the hands of Colorado earlier this year. So now Oklahoma and Colorado pulling hard for the Sooners to regroup behind Cale Gundy and get it down. The eye draw blocking on the backside, good blocking at the point C, and the defensive lineman were upfield, the old linebacker overran the play, couldn't, the corner couldn't come to balance there to make the tackle touchdown. It ain't over. 257. 1914. return to the year uh, was 38 yards. That's not an outstanding return. The wind in his back. Four yards deep and down. It'll come out on the 20 now for Cale Gundy. You know, Cale Gundy's brother, Mike Gundy, was a fabulous quarterback at Oklahoma State. Set all the passing records down there. And Mike, I know, is a coach, and I'm sure that he, along with everyone else in the state of Oklahoma now, is watching the series. The Sooners trail it 19-14. And it'll be Oklahoma looking for the big play. Well, they have time to just go ahead and try to run the ball as well. Mix it up a little bit. Don't forget that good straight up field run. They'll throw short, first down, high, and incomplete. And he was there on the quick slant. Got it up high to Corey Warren. Again, he's throwing into the wind. When you get a ball that's going to sail a little high on you, into the wind, it'll go higher. Gundy's fourth throw of the day. He's completed one for 10 yards. In visiting with Gundy yesterday, he said, if I had a choice in regard to the pass that I throw, I would rather throw the pass coming off play action. I feel stronger and better and more confident with that type of throw. Battling that win. Second and 10. Straight back. 
Well protected and fires complete. Low and complete to the 33-yard line. That was Ted Long. First down, Sooners. These Sooners receivers, you know, weren't recruited as receivers. They, they're defensive backs. Uh, Long was a high school quarterback. Here he's playing receiver. Eventually, you'll see him recruit receivers to play receiver positions. So the young man from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Six foot, 189 pound sophomore, Cale Gundy, trying to rally the Sooners here. First time they've been behind all game long. They were ahead 14 nothing in this game, and they have given up 19 unanswered points to the Cornhuskers. I think the whole key to Nebraska so far in this ballgame is that how they handled the adversity early. They didn't sink and go in the bucket. They kept their heads up, and here they are leading. And now Gundy to put it up again, getting good pass protection, hits Gaddis to the 36-yard line, and he's hit and hit hard by Stewart. Eddie Stewart is a converted safety. He's playing linebacker at 195 pounds. See, but have him in there now because he, he can play pass defense better than the big, more physical guy. Coming down to the two-minute mark here. Gundy off a play fake. His line's giving him time, and he just drops it off into the hands of his running back. And that's a first down for Oklahoma. remaining trailing it by five the longest field goal made by Nebraska kicker this year is 39 yards Brent so they have a long ways to move it won't do them a bit of good Gundy again standing up high and wanted Gaddis it's touchdown or nothing as far as Oklahoma is concerned in this baby the Sooners, you know, lead this series overall, 39 to 29 with three ties. Hard to believe, folks, but from 1943 through 1958, the Sooners won 16 games in a row. That seems impossible. It really does in this one. Second down and 10. He's audibly to both sides right now. Running out of time. Gundy must go quickly. He gets it off. Again protected. Down the middle. And incomplete. The intended receiver on that one was Greg Urban, number five. Boy, every time the ball's been up like that in today's game, it seemed like somebody has come up with a play. This one, he just could not quite come up with it, but he made that gallant effort. And there's Tyrone Bird, number eight, coming over to help out. Dislodge that ball. Third down and ten. Gundy. Waits for someone to get free. Still scrambling and brought down at the 49-yard line. That was Alberts in pursuit who caught him short of the first down. Oklahoma will go on fourth. See, the trouble with those kind of plays, too, Brent, is they eat up a lot of time. A lot of seconds ran off the clock with the quarterback having the ball in his hand. They've got to be thinking field goal. A minute ago, I, I said Nebraska, of course, speaking Oklahoma. 39 yards is the longest one they've made this year. So Gundy dashed over to the sideline on the Oklahoma side as timeout was called, leaving the Sooners with just one. The Nebraska defensive players over there on that far side. And Gundy ran over by the heaters and warming up his hands it looks like he might be warming up or perhaps it was injured a little bit the way he was shaking that left hand makes you wonder just a little bit what had happened he just absolutely dashed off the field and went over there to that heater on that side We've got more excitement coming your way tomorrow. Florida State and Florida. And 
And that's at high noon Eastern time or 9 o'clock out in Los Angeles, San Francisco. The folks in Seattle will be watching that one too. Oklahoma has been successful on both their fourth down efforts in this game. This one the most important. The fake toss to Gattis, the quick fire for the first down to the 44 and Warren. Nifty little play. Yeah, well, see, you make that reverse pivot fake the toss, pulls the linebackers, gives you the throwing lane, you throw the slant behind it. Watch this now, he's going to reverse pivot. This is the kind of stuff he likes. He makes the fake, then he reaches back and throws that little slant pad in there. No underneath coverage for the linebackers. Gundy is working against the Nebraska team without Kenny Wilhite, who was lost with an injury. A fine cornerback. Beats the defender, throws high and incomplete. But the key part of that play is he overthrew Warren was the fact he did not take the sack. He held off the defensive player. This guy is never beaten. You even talk to the visiting uh, coordinators, Charlie McBride, talking about his opponent, the quarterback. He says, this guy never feels he is beaten. You have to play every snap against Gundy. Young man who had a fine high school baseball career. Now standing in there trying to throw some strikes for the Sooners. Second and ten. Ball is at the Nebraska 44-yard line. Gundy straight back, getting time, fires high and incomplete. It'll be third down. Leggett there defensively for the Cornhuskers. Leggett's made a number of good plays today. And you notice they're not really just laying off, playing scared. They're attacking those out patterns. Third down and ten. Time remaining. It's another gunfight at the OK Corral between Nebraska and Oklahoma. This one comes to the last minute. Looks like they're coming after him. And he gets it off incomplete. But there was fire the defender's eyes as John Perella closed in on Cale Gundy. They brought, okay, that takes guts to come after you in this situation and bring the blitz that leaves you single coverage. And if you get it off, it's one on one downfield. But Perella got there as well as Travis Hill. Gundy's been perfect on fourth down. Three of three, and here's number four. 58 seconds. Huskers leading 19-14. Gundy. Hello, Miami. seconds and start working on the Hurricanes. Nebraska will take on Miami in the Orange Bowl. Oklahoma goes to the Gator Bowl to play Virginia and Colorado will travel to the Blockbuster Bowl where they will play Alabama. And Oklahoma uses up its last time out here with 45 seconds left on the clock hoping for a miracle in Lincoln. Another come from behind dandy in the Oklahoma Nebraska series. This was the first time we pointed out in Osborne's career that neither Nebraska or Oklahoma had been ranked in the top 10 by the AP. Nebraska coming in number 11. But in the New York Times computerized poll, they've got a lot more respect for that man right there. This week they had Nebraska ranked number six with Miami first. And again, that was the New York Times. 
computerized bowl. <laughs> a little wet now. This is what college football is all about. Miserable weather conditions. You know these kids, the carryover value. Hey, Dick. What's that? It's okay by you. I'll take it in Gainesville or Tallahassee or <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you needed to suffer to have a great game. But no, this, I know. But this it is was wonderful. A good Listen, good. as this one closes down, let's enjoy this right now with the crowd and the players. This is a wonderful moment for Osborne and the Cornhuskers. Early in this game, the Cornhuskers battle from behind to win it 19-14. And thus they have battled their way to Miami for a meeting in the Orange Bowl against the top-ranked Miami Hurricanes. And the goalposts are going to fall here in Lincoln this afternoon. continue with our post-game activities in just a moment. <laughs> 